that's for sure Never have to close the door Been a long time, a year before And I'm missing you so bad Hi guys, welcome back to Exmo Lex. Today, my husband Brendan is joining us again. Hi. So today, uh, I kind of wanted to talk about our marriage when we were members of the church and how our marriage has sort of shifted and changed since we left. When I went on Mormon Stories, I talked a bit about how I was a really controlling wife. I was super, super Molly Mormon and I wanted my husband to be that way too. And I kind of, you know, I, I've talked about that before on my channel, but I figured that it would be fun to kind of like have a conversation so you could hear how that was for Brendan and how like our exit was and how that changed our marriage and how our marriage dynamics are different now. But yeah, uh, so I guess we'll just start off for those of you who haven't seen the Mormon, Mormon Stories episode or like need a refresher for how that was for us. When we first got married, I think that we were more lax members of the church like we didn't at the very beginning we'd watch rated r stuff and like family guy which later we thought was absolutely horrid and then we were also like more lax with not being super good about going to church every week or like sometimes yeah. getting food on a sunday or something like that which is all looked down on and i think that that sort of I mean, it started to sort of shift and change within the first like year or so after we got married, especially when I got pregnant with our first child. Yeah. And that's when it really kind of took off where I started to be really intense about it. It came a lot from, I would read these talks by general authorities and prophets that would talk about how it's really important to have really clean media, how swearing drives the spirit away, how like, <laughs> pretty much everything like every little thing that you can think of that the prophets nitpick stuff in the, for the strength of youth pamphlet like all of that stuff suddenly became more and more important to me because I wanted our kids to be raised in a very spiritual environment do you remember when I started doing that yes very vividly I also wanted to be very very good but I also really really didn't want to <laughs> I remember you, we were getting rid of movies, and there was one point where I was like, so you are going to want to divorce me or something if I don't get rid of Ace Ventura, and I think you were pretty serious about it. I actually remember a specific point where, like, we were talking about how, like, modesty is really important and stuff. I remember specifically, like, we were talking about that and, like, going through that process, and you asked about, like, well, what about, like, kids' movies? Like, what about The Little Mermaid? Are we not going to have that movie? And I remember, like, seriously having to think about it and being like, maybe not. <laughs> Like, it was really bad. And, like, any sort of, like, we had a board game that we, it was, like, cartoon. Card um, game. A cartoon um, card game. Munchkin, yeah. And it had, actually, it's in the box here. Let me get it. Oh, I'll geez. just show you. <laughs> Are you sure the box, like, the front of the box is, isn't it? Right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. There, you can kind of see it. Used a Sharpie to like Sharpie out her belly and her cleavage. Can you see that? That one, she had like way too much cleavage showing. And that one. <laughs> Super serious about it to the point where I was censoring cartoon cleavage off of a card game. Uh, <laughs> we, we all got rid of like a whole bunch of movies, like all rated R, obviously. We didn't keep anything rated R, and if it was rated PG-13, we were super, like, specific about it, which is something that I've heard from, like, modern Mormons, I think, are less intense about it than that, but back in, like, the 80s and 90s, when the prophets were putting out these standards, there were a lot of Mormons that would only have, like, G-rated films in their house, yeah. and that was kind of where I was getting it from, was because I would go back and listen to and read talks from apostles like throughout the decades so back in like the 70s 80s and 90s when they were really really serious about this campaign against any inappropriate media so i remember like we would fight about it because i wanted it to be a specific way do you remember yeah we fought a lot about it because i mean there's stuff that like growing up in my household we like watched stuff that had some like innuendo and sexual comedy and stuff like that and swearing and I don't know a lot of those movies and things and games and whatever were part of my childhood and I was pretty attached to some of it so 
it was a pretty hard blow for me to like suddenly have to get rid of it i just wasn't ready for it like i guess in my frame of mind like i was like this is m like us like raising a child in a healthy spiritual environment and doing what the prophet says is more important than like your my feelings, your feelings. <laughs> <laughs> more important than like your the movies in the past that you liked or whatever i mean eventually i i think that i pushed hard enough on that for the most part that i kind of like won that argument yes, because definitely. i could back it all up because i had like all of these talks and stuff so I would show him and try to like guilt him basically into being like look what the prophets have said so if we don't follow this we're not good parents and like how can you be a good priesthood leader in our home if you're not abiding by this stuff to the point where he finally was like Fine. okay <laughs> like I very guess, reluctantly yeah got rid of a bunch of stuff yeah and so that was kind of like something that we just that was how like our marriage and our parenting style I guess and this is like you know when I was still pregnant and when our kids were like babies young enough to not have any idea that any of this was even going on yeah but that's how it was for several years they will never know what <laughs> what was actually like they'll never know no. what it's like to go through that nope because that's not how our house Thank God. <laughs> yeah so it went on like that for quite a while and I feel like I mean our marriage suffered we still would fight about stuff like that pretty often and you know even though it we kind of got over like the hump of it toward the beginning of my pregnancy and stuff it was something that still came up because his family sided with him on it even though they're mormon because i was taking it farther than most mormons do and his family kind of has like some jack mormon tendencies yeah. on stuff like that but I always felt really, really hurt by it because at the time, and like, I look back on it now and I'm like, it was stupid and controlling and rooted in this fear that doesn't, you know, there's, there's nothing to be afraid of, but I was really trying to do the right thing because I thought that following the prophet and doing what they say was the most important thing because this is God's word we're talking about. And so yeah. when his family would like make fun of me for being that way, I could not understand it and it made me feel awful about myself because I felt like I'm just trying really hard to be a good person yeah. and you guys are supposed to have the same beliefs as me so I don't understand why you're just better than everyone else. <laughs> If you haven't seen that TikTok, you guys should follow me on TikTok. Uh, it was very funny. So that's kind of where my mindset was at. And I know that for you, you struggled a lot with that. I struggled probably, very hard. I mean, it probably contributed to not only, like, just our depression and stuff, but, like, our arguments and you feeling unheard. Yes. Like, your feelings <laughs> didn't matter. Very much. I look back on it, and it's, like, it's just sad. Because there was kind of, it was just unnecessary for us to have so many arguments over something so dumb. I know. If we hadn't been in the church, it would have just... Yeah, it would have never been a problem. <laughs> Let's just watch whatever we want together we like do we do whatever now. we want. Yeah, it was <sighs> rough. And I, I've kind of learned this, like, since leaving the church. But, like, and I guess kind of, like, backing up to when we first met and stuff. Brendan's a return missionary. And I was determined to only marry a return missionary. So that was important to Unfortunately. me. Unfortunately. <laughs> and... We met on an LDS dating website, that's how we met, so we both knew that we were both members of the church, and it's weird looking back because I, you know, I went through times in my life where I was more, like, rebellious, and I kind of had some of those times with you when we were first dating yeah. and really young, and we are like, oh, we're rebellious and we swear and stuff. Yeah. And then as we got married, I got pregnant, we were going to start a family. Like I doubled down being like, okay, making up for the past, I'm going to be super, super good. And not only was it just something that I wanted to do, but like as I got more in deeply ingrained into that and read more conference talks and stuff, like I felt more spiritual. I felt like I was getting closer to the way God wanted me to be. I didn't do much of any reading or studying at all because it was boring <laughs> as all get out and so when we first got married and that started changing i was like whoa whoa whoa, whoa. what the <laughs> hell is going on like yeah i was like i want to have family to, like, nights what happened to watching family guy or like doing this and this and this and yeah and i'm sure that like really shocking at first yeah because i wanted to be into i was like 
uh, I want to like do our personal scripture study and then I want to do scripture study together and I want to do family home evening and I want to like study conference talks together and talk about them and no. he was so not into I'm that. like, I just want to like, when we have our free time, I'm ready to sit down and play some games or watch some movies. Yeah. <laughs> like, I... Which, like, and I, I've learned this since leaving the church. He never really told me this, but like he was not as into it as I was. Like. For me, it was super, super important, and I believed it super deeply, and I was able to, like, enjoy parts of it, like, enjoy the studying and stuff, which I now do with other stuff. I had a period like that on my mission. Like, I believed really, really deeply. It was just more of, like, a, I feel like I have a personal connection, and it's not so much about yeah, the Yeah, but you found a lot of it boring, right? Oh, yeah. Which is totally understandable because it is, but like, I didn't realize for him that like going to church and stuff was a drag, where for me it was like, it kind of was, but I suppressed that and I wanted it to be like, this is really happy and really spiritual and really good for our family. I want And I wanted him to be like this spiritual leader, like they say that like the man is supposed to be the head of the family and be like the, the priesthood holder, the guy who gives blessings to everybody and stuff, oh. and so I was really pushy for him to be that person. And did that ever, like, the way I acted about all of the scripture study and stuff, did that make you feel guilty at the time? Yeah. Like, <laughs> so guilty all the time. <laughs> it was bad, and that's part of the reason I think that we had, we both were pretty depressed off and on, especially early on. Probably the first, and like, four years, or three or four years. We were just, like, n almost nuclear. It yeah. was so bad. We had a hard time. It's weird looking back too because it's like on the outside, like most people that weren't close to us, like people in our ward would have thought like, oh, like the perfect little spiritual Mormon yeah. family. No, there and were... meanwhile, we were there struggling. Were nights we were up till 3 a.m., passed out on the floor from crying and hating ourselves so much. Yeah. It was awful. And a lot of it, I think, most all of it. All of it. Almost all of it Almost had to do with the pressure from the church because since leaving, I mean, I learned some like um, mental techniques and stuff for fighting depression and that helped a lot. But then like leaving the church just kind of like took the rest of it away for the most part. There's still some occasionally just because I hold myself I think everybody does that or they just hold themselves to a certain standard and when you fall short you just kind of yeah, beat you yourself bad. up. The absolutely like existential just wallowing and self-crisis and all that stuff to kind of just... Yeah, well and at the time away. we would attribute it, a lot of it, to being like, oh it's Satan and stuff. So I remember like... Well, we're not we'd... being good enough. Yeah, where we'd, we'd like fight and argue and one of us would get super depressed and one, the other person would be like, you know, this is just Satan trying to get inside your head. Which would not help. <laughs> no, it never helped. It was a struggle with us. Like, the first few years of our marriage, and at the time like we were... I was either pregnant or we had a baby, like constantly. That didn't help either. Yeah, so that was just more difficult, having kids in the mix of that. And like, I really feel like the church, the church's high standards and me wanting to reach every single one of them and pressuring you to reach every single one of them is part of the reason why our marriage struggled so bad. I mean, we were both pretty immature at the time, but it would not have been nearly as bad had it not been for this constant pressure to if be If all perfect. that had been removed, no, it would yeah. have been so, because like, even so much drastically better. When we were dating and we weren't as high pressure and weren't as into the church, we did a lot better than once we got yeah. married, got pregnant, and started, like, trying to keep up with the church, like, super strong. Yeah, which is super odd. Yeah. It felt odd making that change and then everything got worse. Yeah. <laughs> We got married, like, six months after we met. Yeah. And engaged, like, four months after we met. And I had decided we were getting married on the second date. Yeah. Yeah. Just Mormon things. When we get married. <laughs> That's what he said to me on our second date. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we, we get married. We go through that struggle bus, do all that stuff. And then it comes to... I mean, I feel like we were starting to do better. We had our fourth and final baby, 
and I got my tubes tied because we didn't want any more and I feel like just that was kind of like a relief just knowing like we're done <laughs> we are done that and I had it took a long time but I had eventually kind of just resigned myself to like well this is life this is life I'm not gonna go back to a lot of that I had weeded out I'm a huge metalhead obviously I had weeded out a lot of music and had gone through and personally censored a lot of music. Like taking out the swear words, yeah. bad messages, bad yeah. messages, um, still like the album cover thing, um, still didn't have any like movies that had any sort of sexual anything in them. So um, I was like, this is pretty much my life, very limited. We watched everything on VidAngel, which is like a streaming service that you can censor movies with. Yeah. So that's how we were living life. But you had kind of... I'd kind of just given up. Like, okay. And it was like, I might as well just be happy with the way things are. And so I felt like I was doing a little bit better. I mean, things were going better and we were doing better. We weren't fighting as much. We didn't... And I feel like part of it, too, was that you'd gotten a better job. That, yeah, so helped, that we yeah. were... I mean, before we had been super, super poor, like, barely could afford to... Like, it'd be like, okay, should we buy a gallon of gas? or bread kind of a thing. Yeah. And he'd finally gotten a job where we weren't struggling as bad. We were, and that helped a lot. I feel like with just the general, like it, it's, it's nice to not be Constantly feeling like you're worrying about, yeah. Being like, able am to I going to be able to pay rent? Am I going to be able to buy food? Like we all did of that, that kind for of stuff. years and it was hard. Yeah. It was really, really rough. So that was going better and we weren't going to have any more kids. That was really good. And things were kind of starting to feel like, pretty decent. Um, we had recently moved and I actually didn't like our new ward as much as our old one. I felt like I didn't connect with as many people, but we were Same. still trying. Like we were trying to make friends, like trying to get into it more. And then um, that's when I read the CES letter <laughs> without any idea of like how that was going to change the entire course of our lives. I've done so many videos where I talk about that, but the basics of it is that somebody in my family was struggling and I read the CES letter thinking that I could help them with their testimony. So and then you called me and I thought I could help you. Yeah. Missionary so he was at, work all the way. at the time. And I started reading this and was done like in a matter of hours. Called him at work because I was freaking out. I was like, holy crap, the church might not be true. Like I'm, I'm like, no, nah, there's no way. I've got all the answers for this because I went on a mission. Yeah. So he's like, Don't worry about it. Like and he kept trying to like tell me what the things were over the phone. I was like, no, you just need to come home when we need to talk about this. I need to show you. And he was like, it's going to be fine. He comes home and I started just like directly reading all of this stuff. And at first he would kind of try to like answer. Like, be the like, first oh. ones were easier to like use apologetics on. Yeah. And I'm like, oh yeah, I've heard some of these before. Yeah. Stuff he turned on his mission. Yeah. Yeah, and then, but then it got into like, the deep, we keep the nitty going. gritty. Like, and it goes on forever, you know. Like, there's so much, and if like for me, I hadn't heard 99% of it, and so it was like it just kept going, and I was like, each of these things is damning, but when you put them all together, and it's crazy. And so I'm like reading this, and I look up and remember seeing him like standing there, like staring at the floor with big eyes, just like my life is crashing down around me. Yeah, it was like that, the meme with the dog and everything's on fire. Yeah. I'm like, this, this is, is fine. fine. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, we were, we were like active at the time. We were, um, we had just gone to his had, brother's mission farewell. I had just turned down a calling though. I think you had left a calling. You no. were a primary teacher and you asked to be released because the other guy you were working oh, with sucked. Oh yeah. Oh, he was awful. Yeah. But like, we were still like go actively going to church. I think the only thing that like we weren't doing as well with was we had a baby at the time. She was like five or six months old and I loved using her as an excuse to get out of class. If she like so much as made a noise, I'd go sit on the couch. And then I would be, like, I'd be like, I need to help. <laughs> yeah. Other than that though, I mean, we were still like actively going to sacrament. We were, you know, taking the sacrament, obviously we were trying to do all the right things. So for us, it was like the whole world is crashing Yeah. and I took several weeks where pretty much all I did every day was take care of my kids and research and cry. 
And then, I, you know, I would, I obviously spent a lot of time praying too, because I wanted, you know, I wanted there to be some sort of answer. And for me, I wanted the church to be true. And I know this is different for you, but for me, I wanted it to be true because this whole idea of being an eternal family forever was all I wanted out of my life. And it's all I had been raised to want. And when that started to crumble, I felt like my whole identity was going with it. And it really, it cut me up inside and I felt awful. I cried about it a lot. It took me a long time. I mean, I'm not a long time. I feel like I went through this process a lot quicker than a lot of people do, but it took me longer than you to like process all of it. And it took me doing tons and tons of reading and listening to videos and books and things like that to get to a point where I was like, okay, I don't believe it and it's okay and everything is going to be okay. But what was that like for you? So for the first, I'd say for the first week or week and a half, it was pretty rough and I did like, I felt serious um, like sadness and stuff over the whole eternal family deal as that was kind of a big selling point for me too. Um, but deep down I like never really liked going. I felt like my personal identity was already more of like, I'm a metalhead, I'm a gamer, these are the things I like to do, this is what, and I'm a father, and like, these things. And I didn't research or read as much, but she would show me a lot of what she had researched, and then I would take the time to look through those things and examine facts and watch videos and all that. Um, I mean, I did do a lot of research and fact-checking And we watched that a way. lot of videos together, too. Yeah. Like, I'd pull it up and be like, watch this. <laughs> if there was anything new that I hadn't heard of before, she hadn't, we would share it with each other. Yeah. And just keep going down the rabbit hole. So, I did do plenty of research and, and study, if you want to call it that. But after a couple weeks, I remember just, I was driving at work and... I was thinking about a lot of it, and I kind of just was like, you know what, like, this is actually, this could be totally awesome, don't have to waste all this time doing X, Y, and Z, yada yada. So, <laughs> we have a temple pretty close by, and I was actually driving by that, that day, and I think it was the first time that I, like, I rolled my window down, and I just flipped it off <laughs> as I drove by. And I just had the most, like, overwhelming feeling of, like, just freedom for the first time in my entire life. Like, I can just be who I am and it doesn't matter anymore. And, I mean, I don't know. I was just really, really, really happy inside for a long time, very shortly after we left. Redownloaded all the songs I wanted to listen to just went haywire and never looked back and it's been fantastic. Yeah. I feel like it, it started unfolding pretty quickly after that where we were like, okay, get rid of all these books, like get rid of Mormon, garments, get, get rid, rid of, of garments, get rid of our temple recommend like holders. We had like fancy little holders for them. Oh yeah. Got rid of, I mean like anything that would invite cringe yeah like all of, like the signs and the photos and like our Christus statue yeah all of that stuff pretty quickly we started flushing out and then we started bringing in other things like you said like games and movies and music normal art um started wearing tank tops that yeah. was so exciting oh, so I love exciting. it I, uh, working in construction in the heat of the summer, it is the worst thing ever, wearing garments under a regular sleeve shirt. But it took him a while to get to that point. I remember... Yeah, the... because I'd gotten so used to wearing them on my mission and stuff, and I had fairly comfortable, like, bot the bottoms or whatever. And so I was, I was just really used to the way that felt, and so I was trying to kind of just replicate that but not with yeah. garments after we left and it only took a few weeks for me to be like yeah nah i'm just not i'm not wearing a like undershirt but Why? i remember like the first week after we decided to stop going to church we went to target together as a family and he bought like a pack of like tank top undershirts yeah and you wore those for like a couple months maybe 
yeah, maybe not, not even. Long. Yeah. I was like, it was kind of like part of the deconstruction and like getting used to like going back to like, oh, like normal life, like how normal people behave and stuff. And like, that's not something you need yeah. anymore after a while. Yeah. And it kind of went the same way with everything else too. Like drinking, it took us a while to try drinks. Yeah. That, and I was really hesitant with that one. I tried to sip. Like a friend brought over some Mike's Hard Lemonade, which is like 5% alcohol. And, and I was tiny. the cringiest person ever. He was like, I'm not going to try it. But I tried like a sip of it. I might become an, I don't want to become addicted and I'll become be an alcoholic. <laughs> That's the way I was raised, is if you try even one sip, you're an alcoholic. That's and it. it's not even true mm. at all. Beer, not even once. <laughs> but uh, after a while, and I kind of want to do a whole video sort of exploring this, but um, short story, after a while we decided to try drinking and like realized like it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. So we just started with like wine or Mike's Hard Lemonade, stuff like that. And that was really fun because we realized like it spices up your sex life, which had already gotten better after we left. Yeah. And so we were like, well, let's drink like all the time because like this <laughs> is really freaking fun. And so we, we, for a while there, we drank pretty much every weekend and we'd get pretty drunk, right? I think we would. Sorry, flashing back to steamy sex moments. <laughs> but, I mean, like, so that was us for a while where we were just like, yeah, let's drink, like, all the time because we're having so much fun doing it and all this different stuff. And then eventually the novelty kind of wore off. Like, I feel like it's a lot how, like, young people would be yeah. when they try drinking for the first time. Like, it's so exciting at first. Only and then, we're not so young anymore, yeah. or so it's it wore off a little faster. Yeah, it didn't last that long. Now we drink like socially and like once a month maybe. Once every month or two. Once or twice a month. I don't say twice a month. I say maybe once every one or two months, just depending on like if we have people over for like yeah. doing something fun. And I even then, had, it's like not that much. I had a sh my share of overdoing it a couple times, mm -hmm. and that's been enough to be like, hey. Learning experiences. That's maybe what we call those. don't need to go so hard. Yeah. <laughs> so now when we drink, it's like. Not very much. But it is very easy to regulate. Like, I'm going to have X amount because I want to reach this point of feeling yeah. good and, and then done. I can just stop. And I don't want to feel crappy in the morning. I was taught totally opposite of <laughs> yeah. that my whole life. But, like, along with that, as we sort of made those changes and stuff, it was crazy how our marriage just, like, immediately started getting better. Yeah. Like, we were doing okay right before we left. I feel like it was pretty good. But then after we left and got through like the difficult parts of that, it was like everything that we could have been had it not been for the church started falling into place. Like yeah. we were more ourselves. We were able to be more open with each other. I think sometimes having alcohol helped with that because yeah. I talk a lot when I'm drunk. And so we would just sit and like have these long, deep conversations about like everything and talk about our childhoods and stuff. Yeah. But like... It, We've been, we've been way more, we've been just better at communication since we left. And authentic. Yeah, because we feel like we can talk to each other about more stuff, whereas before it was like, you know, if you had anything on your mind, like, I really want to do X, Y, and Z, but it was against the church, and therefore against, like, my beliefs and stuff, you would feel guilty about it, so we wouldn't talk about those things. Yeah. And then that would leave us in a point where, like, I mean, not communicating, I feel like, is one of the worst things for a relationship. And being able to it communicate is. well is one of the best things for a relationship. So it's just been like a million times better on that front. Yeah. The sex is better, not going to lie. Won't go into details because I don't want to freak you guys out. But after <laughs> leaving the church, sex is better. It just is. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I remember, okay, another big moment for me is when we went, we went and saw the band Ghost live. And they're very, like, occult, satanic, and it's very, like, playful and fun at the same time. I just remember being there and for the first time, like, just singing along to every song at the top of my lungs and just feeling so free and, like, being, like, just shortly, like, maybe a year ago, wasn't mm -hmm. that long? Yeah. Maybe a year ago, I would have been, like, so horrified, horrified with this and, like, absolutely appalled with myself like for being here. Like, singing Satan and stuff. But it was one of the funnest things we've ever been to and... Go get Papa. Oh. 
since we're talking about ghosts. I know the lighting is getting weird by the way the sun's going down. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. I anyway, remember. super fun show, super freeing because it was like, this is all just make believe and it's fun. It was so fun. Like, I feel like for me that was a big moment too. I mean, it was just a really fun concert, but like singing with the crowd those songs that we before would have felt were so oh, satanic yeah. and evil. Like this would make you a bad person if you were doing this. And I was just going nuts over it. Yeah. I like, and it's funny too because like it was like ecstasy. Like I felt so yes. happy. It was so much fun. And I felt that same feeling that I used to feel at church when I would yeah, describe it as the, the spirit. spirit. We there. felt the spirit. But singing. I felt the like times ten what I yeah. ever had felt in the church. It was like joyful. Like, and I still look back at that and I'm like, that was one of the funnest nights of my life. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. So fantastic. So much fun. So thanks, Ghost. I'm trying to think if there's anything that we missed, of, like how our relationship has changed and how we sort of navigated that. It's we. Okay, well, there's the fact, too, that, like, since we started drinking and doing different things and we started trying to find some community because we left the church, having ex-Mormon and, like, atheist friends and community has helped our relationship and mm -hmm. actually has made us, like, some real friends, I feel like. We didn't really, like, I mean, we'd have church friends, but... It was kind of just we you'd see each other at them. church and you weren't super close. We didn't do anything outside of church. And I feel like that's because, like, my interests, I'm like, there's no way anyone's going to want to go to a concert with me or anything. Um, but we started having people over for, like, game nights and just, like, drinking socially with people. And I feel like we, for the first time, like, since high school and college for me had like some actual friends as a couple yeah and I think that helped a lot too that helped with our relationship and it helped with like I mean just it's, it's good to have friends yeah and I felt like a lot of the times especially as we were meeting other ex-mormons and stuff they had something that we could really relate to and with mormonism it's like you have that you have a community because you all believe the same thing or whatever yeah. but when you've been through something as traumatic as having your entire life turned upside down because you realize you were raised in a cult those people you can connect with like so deeply and yeah. so we were able to make friends like quickly that way and we still do i mean we've still recently had people over that have also left the church and it's like you just you get along with those people so well yeah so fast we just yeah early marriage was like we were pretty well closed off from everybody we'd pretty much spend time at home with ourselves alone or we would go to like family gatherings occasionally and which that i'm sure was... contributed to our mental health problems yeah. because it was like i mean as much as you love each other like you have to have other friends you have to it is make... good too yeah yeah i mean yeah and it's like especially when we're making like couples friends and stuff like it's just really really fun for us and we didn't have that in the church no. hardly at all there were some couples that that we would talk to that were nice and helpful and stuff, but we didn't really do much with them. It's weird just how much our lives have changed. Like, I love you more now than I did when we met. Like, I love you more than anything, and I loved you back then, but it's just like, since leaving and realizing like, and I don't know, getting my own identity apart from like this identity that was assigned That's, to me. Yeah, forced on like, you. Like, it's, I've changed a lot as a person. My interests have changed and everything, but I love you more than I ever have now, and I'm able to communicate that better. Duh. <laughs> I love you more than ever, too. That's good. Leaving the church is good. That's, yeah, it's been, like, I would never take it back, ever, mm -hmm. ever, ever. I kind of wanted to talk in this video, too, a little bit about how, like, I know for a lot of people, when one of the people in a marriage leaves the church that's really hard and like people have questions about how to navigate that and stuff but that wasn't a thing for us because it's, yeah i can't I mean, really relate to it we were not i mean we're better communicators now than we were back then but at that time we were still pretty good we've always been really close and really tight-knit and like yeah, best we, friends we talk to each other a lot and about most everything yeah and so I mean, there was, I did, I did definitely have like a couple moments where I was reading the CES letter before I told him about it, where I was like, I like, what if this all is real and the church is not true? 
will Brendan want to be married to me if I leave? Because it's so important in the church to have this eternal partner. And I was like, how, like, how would he respond? Would he want to leave me? Like, would he, you know, and I definitely had those fears. I remember vividly having them, but it wasn't really an option for me to like, not tell him about it. Like yeah. I, I couldn't live that way. I couldn't live with this like lie or this me pretending thing. And so I told them right away and we were, I was super honest about it and we both read it together. And I don't, I know that not everybody's relationship dynamic is the same. So maybe you couldn't do that in your situation, yeah. but I feel like but if you're thinking about it, and you think you could, you absolutely should read it together. I feel like being honest and open with each other is really, really important. Like, it's super healthy, and if you start your journey out of the church together like that... It's so much easier. It will be, yeah, it'll be way easier, and your relationship will be that much healthier. Talking through how you both feel, and not letting like one person... I mean, I, I and this isn't a problem that we've had in our own relationship, but people that I'm close to, I've seen them go through this, or one person will sort of shut the other one out and not want to talk about these feelings and not want to talk about their beliefs and their religious, you know, anything or their spirituality when it comes to leaving religion like this. But it's been really awful for those people in their relationships to do that because then you're shutting the other person out and leaving them at a point where they can't help you because they don't know what to say. They don't know how you feel if you don't tell them. Yeah. You're not, you know, you can't read people's minds. So it's really important for you to both be in the same, you know, on the same level of like, we're going to communicate, we're going to talk about this. We're not just going to pretend like it's not happening. Yeah. If you can at all, just got to. communicate with each other. <laughs> Did you ever consider leaving? Like when mm -hmm. I was going through all this and was like, I read it all and the church isn't true. And I don't know. Like, were you ever like, oh no, I can't be with you if you don't believe. <laughs> no. <laughs> all right. Well, if that's it, that's all we have to say. I can't think of anything else, so I guess we're done. But thank you guys so much for watching, and thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel. I appreciate you guys so much. And a special thank you to Anthony Guthrie, at Kegar, Craig Call, Doug Davis, Mormonland, The Guiltiest Place on Earth, Jake Nunyabiz, Jason Wilkins, Melissa Jane, and the Exmo Candle Company for supporting at the Demon Tier on my Patreon. It's over! It's not, <laughs> it's not over yet! No. If you would like to support the channel, you can find links to do that in the description below, as well as links to find me on other social media if you want to see other content. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, share, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! It's over! Never revealing no secrets you're keeping These promises strong as a spell I'll never tell Yeah, I'm like you, that's for sure Never have to close the door